All righty. We have uh, quite a lot of people who have tuned in this afternoon, and we'll get the session started. So let's start a bit with the introductions. Welcome, Prasamsa. Um, she is actually one of our experienced qualified education consultants who especially aims to help students find relevant courses that will lead them to better career pathways and their future in Australia. She's processed countless number of applications helping students get placed in the ideal courses um, matched with their expectations and aspirations. So welcome Prasamsa and thank you so much for joining us today. And alongside Prasamsa, we have uh, Mr. Michael Ingram, the Regional Manager at TAFE International Western Australia, and Mr. Craig DeMello, Marketing Manager at Opera Institute. So welcome, everybody. Um, participants, we have an lead panel today, so engage with us. Not only will you get answers to all your questions, but you'll also be eligible to uh, win exciting giveaways and prizes. So engage with us as much as you can. Over to you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, Riddhi, uh, for the introduction. Let me share the uh, presentation. Just give me a second. So are you guys able to see my presentation? Yep, we can. Yep. Oh, good. Just give me a second. Uh, so I would like to welcome all the participants uh, to Education Summit 2022. I'm Prasamsha Shakya, and then I'll be presenting the PowerPoint slides and information about cookery and automotive course and career. Uh, so let's start with uh, the more attractive thing for this session. So we have uh, some very exciting giveaways for our attendees. We have bumper prize to claim for the ones who leave the most descriptive reviews under this Facebook post and tag your friends and hashtag, put, don't forget to put hashtag Aussies Education Summit 2022, hashtag Aussies group in the comment section along with your feedback. And also most participative audience, a uh, member from the chat box is eligible for free giveaways such as uh, free PT coaching, IELTS coaching, PR consultation, and we encourage you to come be part of our session. Thank you. So uh, starting with commercial cookery. So uh, studying commercial cookery is a popular choice amongst most of the international students, steered by the high standard of Australian restaurant scene and expert culinary schools where students can learn from their expert mentors. It's not a surprise that hospitality is the fastest growing industry and is expected to grow 12% throughout the following five years, providing extra employment opportunities. So there are many regions you should study the commercial course in Australia and the, the commercial cookery course provides a whole lot of opportunities to excel uh, in your career in hospitality uh, industry. So if you're interested in taking your passion into next level and turn it into your work life as well, so you need to enroll for these courses, which is Certificate 3 in Commercial Cookery, Certificate 4 in Commercial Cookery, Diploma of Hospitality and Advanced Diploma of Hospitality. Um, so after completion of this course, the career outcome would be you can uh, work as a cook or a chef. And further, talking about uh, automotive courses. Uh, so we do have variety of options in automotive courses. So automotive courses give students the opportunity to gain a range of skills suitable for employment in automotive industry. Uh, the course focuses on providing students with knowledge and skills required to perform mini, uh, minor services and preparatory work in areas of automotive industry. So Australia's automotive industry is a major contributor to the nation's lifestyle and economy. The automotive sector is the largest manufacturing industry in Australia with nearly 52,000 people directly employed by the three local vehicle manufacturers, dozens of importers and thousands of related component manufacturers. So after studying, like you can enroll for certificate three in light vehicle mechanical, certificate three in automotive mechanical, technical uh, uh, certificate three in automotive sales, certificate four in automotive electrical technology, certificate four in automotive mechanical diagnosis, diploma of automotive management, 
and Diploma of Automotive Technology. So after completion of this study, the career outcome, you will be able to get uh, like build your career as a vehicle service technician, vehicle technician, automotive technician, automotive technical advisor, motor mechanic, and automotive electrician. Uh, so further going forward, uh, so there will be a certain general entry requirements to get into all these courses. So to enter into Certificate 3, you must have completed Year 12 or equivalent Australian equivalent degree. Uh, there is an English requirement, minimum uh, requirement will be IELTS 5.5 or equivalent. Uh, if you want to enroll in Certificate 4, usually there will be a prerequisite of Certificate 3 course and you must have completed year 12 or Australian equivalent degree and English requirement will be same as in Certificate 3, which is minimum English level of IELTS 5.5 or equivalent and diploma course uh, completed year 12 or Australian equivalent degree plus same as the English level will be same as in Certificate 3 and 4. So you, if you're interested, you can also enroll into Advanced Diploma course. Usually there will be a prerequisite of Diploma course for this course uh, to get into Advanced Diploma. And the entry requirement will be similar to the previous Diploma and Certificate 3 and Certificate 4. But if you have completed any Australian AQF level, Certificate 4 or higher English requirement will be waived off. Um, so moving forward, the exciting thing for this uh, international student is scholarship. So uh, for a diploma and the certificate three and certificate four, the, most of the education providers, they are providing op uh, promotional fees and they is a regional scholarship and they also provide various discounts in offers and they do offer flexible payment plan, minimum uh, initial payment fees and they do have flexible monthly payment plans as well, which will be very easy and convenient for the international students. Moving forward, uh, so for the education providers, we do have numbers of education providers which offer this cookery course statewide. So uh, they are most like popular uh, education providers like as in TAFE, Apero, Durban International, Salford College, Meridian, Lake Cordon Bleu, Macallan College, so it, we have various numbers of education providers which offer this course with minimum in, uh, minimum initial deposit, flexible payment plan, and a good learning environment. Accordingly, we do have numbers of education providers in different states uh, for automotive course as well. So uh, the most popular courses uh, is in TAFE, Sheffield College, Durban, uh, and then Apero Institute, Victorian Institute, Macallan College, and so on. So if you want to enroll in this college, you can contact us so that we can assist you to further process your admission in these colleges. Uh, so moving forward, uh, for the employment opportunity for a cookery course and all. Uh, so we have, like once you complete your Certificate 3, Certificate 4 and Diploma of Hospitality, uh, you can opt for a career opportunity in, as a chef. So employees in hospitality in Australia procure an average salary even in selection level position and workers can move rapidly up the career ladder. A kitchen or a cafe is fast-paced environment uh, requiring laborers in, to think on their feet and work well together. So great correspondence and interpersonal aptitude are important to work uh, in the diamond environment. So advantage from working in hospitality industry that is growing at rapidly and consistently advancing. So increasing in demand or drifting society of foodies and uh, re residents growth, the hospitality industry is expected to grow significantly. So in the industry demand inventive uh, and difficult work and individuals with a dream of they what, what they want to do. So after completion of the two year study, students can apply for job ready programs as well. And as per the employment outlook, uh, as a chef, you usually need a certificate for in commercial cookery to work as a chef. Chef plans and organize the the preparation and cooking of food in dining and catering establishment. So as per the research, there were 94,400 chefs in 2020. The numbers of workers grew strongly over the past five years. And it is expected to grow very strongly over next five years. And uh, as per the research, it says that it is likely to reach 112,700 numbers by 2025. 
So the weekly average earning of chef is uh, 1,250 below the average of 1,460 per, uh, per the salary uh, research. So earning tend to be lower when start, uh, starting out, but then higher as experience grows. So in, uh, as per the employment opportunity state-wise and territory-wise, the employment prospect can change over the time and vary by reason and size of the state pollution, uh, population. Uh, whereas it says uh, in NSW, the occupation requirement, it shows 32.8 as per the uh, population and the size of the region. Whereas in SA, it, it shows 6.5. Accordingly, in other states, there's like relevant numbers for the occupation as SEF. So moving forward uh, to uh, if you have a opportunity to work as a cook, so study of certificate three and certificate four is mandatory to get into this occupation uh, as a cook and uh, to cook, prepare and season cook food in dining and catering establishments. So there were 38,100 cook as in 2020, uh, and the numbers of workers grew strongly over five years. And it is expected to stay same over the next five years, that there will be slightly change in the numbers. So it is likely to reach 37,400 by 2025. And the weekly average earning of uh, cook will be 1,068, uh, below the average of 1,460 of total salary paid. And as per the, as I've informed you earlier, so the employ, the employment opportunity, it varies from states to states as per the uh, reason and size of the state. So as per the research, it says that in NSW, the occupation uh, opportunities as a cook, it shows 30.31.1%, whereas in Victoria, it shows 24.5%. In Queensland, it's 20.3%. Similar to that, uh, in South Australia, it's 7.5. Western Australia, it's 10.9. Tasmania, 2.9. Northern Territory, it's 1.5%. And ACT, it's 1.4%. Uh, so moving forward, uh, we have done a few research about the automotive industry as well. So after completion of automotive uh, course, the automotive industry is broad, broad and encompasses a variety of activities and businesses. So these activities include repair and services of vehicle, retailing of vehicles, part and tools, uh, repair maintenance, repair and services, outdoor, uh, outdoor power equipment, and motorcycles. So in the automotive industry is estimated to contribute uh, 37 billion to the Australian economy. And as at May 2018, the industry employed over 356,000 employees in Australia. So talking about the automotive electrician, you usually need to uh, study certificate three in automotive electrical technology to work as an automotive electrician. Electronic, uh, automotive electrician install, maintain and repair electrical wiring and uh, electronic uh, component in motor vehicles. So there were 2,400 automotive electricians as per 2020 and the numbers of worker, it fell over five, uh, like over the past five years and it is expected to grow in next five years. So uh, further, further, you need to study certificate three in light vehicle mechanical to work as a motor mechanic and motor mechanic repairs, maintain and test motor vehicles and other internal combustion engines and related uh, technical components. So there were 98,200 motor mechanics in 2020 and they expected stay about the same over like next, next five years. So it is likely to reach 99,700 by 2025 and the full-time worker on adult wage earn around 1,436 per week, which is similar to the average salary paid that is 1,460. So yeah, employment opportunity, it varies from states to states. Uh, so they like it's all up to the student if they take initiations to uh, like work in the particular field while studying they need to start at least while studying and then once they complete the degree there are various opportunities available in Australia. So going forward uh, we have uh, the occupation uh, projection 
uh, till 2025 for these occupation lists. As per the research, it says uh, the cafe and restaurant manager. So the occupation employment level level as per November 2020, it was 60.7%. And as after five years, it is expected to increase by 35%. Uh, as in chef and cook, it is expected to increase by 19.4%. As in for automotive electrician, automotive electrician and mechanics, so it is still expected to increase Increase by uh, up to like 6.3 percent. So each year, the National Skill Commission produces employment projection by industry, occupation, skill levels, and region for following five-year period. So these employment projection are designed to provide a guide to the future direction of the labor market. However, uh, like all such exercises, they are subject to an inherent degree of uncertainty. So it differs from time to time and it depends upon the uh, situation at that time. As in, like, for example, due to COVID, there were like some fluctuation in the opportunity in hospitality sector and automotive sector, and it affects all this uh, employment opportunity as well. So further. Uh, so as per the occupation requirement in the uh, Australia, so as per our research and then uh, it says that uh, there were a few vacancies announced for particular courses and hospitality worker. As per the numbers of job advertisement, it was 8,700 uh, posts were released. And then there were there were vacancy announcements by the various organizations, various restaurant and hospitality sector to provide opportunity to the upcoming international students and all. So for trade and automotive courses as well, they, were, they have posted around 9,400 vacancy posted. Uh, which is a huge number for international students to grab attention and grab the opportunity to get into the particular field of interest. Um, so, yes, so I have come to the end of my presentation. So, yeah, as I've told you initially, so we are providing bumper prizes to the one uh, who leave the most descriptive review under this Facebook post and then tag your friend with hashtag Aussies group uh, Education Summit 2022 and hashtag Aussies Group. So, uh, so yeah, thank you. So I'm just passing this uh, floor to uh, Michael Ingram, who is a regional manager of TAFE International Western Australia. Thank you, Prasamsa. Can you hear me clearly? Can you hear me, guys? Yes. That's yes, a, Michael, good. we can hear you well. Oh, that's super. Well, hello, everybody. It looks like we've got about 24 guests uh, who have joined us, so that's fantastic. And I'm just going to get my slides ready and fire through them as quickly as I can. You can all see the slides on your screen? Yep, we yes. can. Yep. Fantastic. Usually I turn my camera off so you can concentrate on the slides, but uh, I'll leave the camera on for the moment. So my name is Michael Ingram. I'm with Tate International Western Australia. I think Prasamsa has, has talked in, in great detail and very eloquently about the opportunities presented through commercial cookery and hospitality and also through automotive, which uh, Craig will get onto in a second, I'm sure. So I won't dwell on it in too much detail. Um, but look, let's, let's have a look. First of all, before we get into the courses, those of you who are not here in Perth in Western Australia, uh, perhaps you're somewhere else in Australia, perhaps you might even be tuning in from overseas somewhere. I'm assuming most of you guys uh, tuning in are onshore. Very quickly, why would you choose Western Australia? Why Perth? Yes, we're a little bit cut off to the rest of the world at the moment. We're hoping that's going to change soon. Uh, we are all getting very frustrated here in Western Australia that we are still closed off to the rest of the world, but that will change soon. And uh, when it does, it is going to be a fantastic place to come, uh, not just for your studies, but hopefully for uh, whatever opportunities uh, come up beyond that. Western Australia is Australia's largest state. Uh, it's, it's economically the strongest state as well. Throughout the entire pandemic, we're the only state that has performed uh, in positive numbers in terms of the economy. And Perth is officially uh, the most affordable uh, city in Australia out of the capital cities. So out of the five capital cities, Perth is the most affordable. We are currently uh, ranked the sixth most livable city in the world. And we also have a regional designation. Uh, which means you have opportunities after your studies uh, to, you know, see what it's like uh, living here. I'm just going to turn my laser pen on. There it is. So what does it offer as a city? I think the key word here uh, is balance. I used to be an international student myself, 
a few years ago, Perth has changed quite a lot since I was a student, uh, but balance is the key word. You're not going to get the same level of balance in some of the bigger cities in Australia. Perth offers a lot of balance, not too busy, not too quiet. So it's perfect for international students. Uh, and rest assured, just like the rest of Australia, we have a world-class education system. Uh, the standard is very high across Australia, particularly with government institutions like TAFE Western Australia. And when things open up, there are going to be a lot of part-time opportunities, just like Prasamsa has talked about. Employment opportunities are very, very strong. And obviously here, the lifestyle, the culture, weather, scenery, you cannot ask for more in Western Australia. And just a few very quick pic pictures for you. Uh, this is the very famous Blue Boat House, which is on the Swan River. You might look at this and think this is in the countryside. This is only uh, one or two kilometers from the CBD of Perth. Uh, and then just a little bit further away from the CBD is Cottesloe Beach. You can see it's a lot more quiet and a lot more uh, easy to swim at compared to somewhere like Bondi Beach in Sydney. Uh, and it's only uh, about half an hour by train from the CBD. And this is what the city center looks like today. It is a thriving metropolis. There's a lot going on. Uh, and it's going to be a great place to come uh, for your studies in the not too distant future. And this photograph is from our what we would call our cultural precinct of Northbridge, where there tends to be a lot of action and a lot of students like to hang out. Uh, and we have a campus not too far from that city. So why would you choose TAFE Western Australia? As I said, a government institution, uh, that, that means basically three things. Number one, we are the largest institution in Western Australia by, by a long way. And I mean across universities and vocational colleges. So we have over 100,000 students enrolled at any given time with TAFE Western Australia. Now, the majority of those are local students, but we do have a large number of international students as well. Um, which brings me to point number two is diversity. So there's a lot of diversity in the classroom. Uh, we are not dominated by any uh, one or two or three different nationalities. We have a lot of diversity. Over 100 nationalities are represented at TAFE Western Australia. And point number three is our reputation and our experience. We've been around for over 100 years. Late 1800s was when TAFE basically was founded. So we have a lot of experience uh, teaching skills uh, and we do it very well. Uh, just very quickly, we do have pathways to our partner universities through a lot of different courses. Of course, we're looking at commercial cookery very quickly today, but we do have a lot of different courses, over 100 available, many of which pathway into our partner universities. All of our courses, of course, another advantage of being a government institution is that all of our courses are taught in really, really interesting state of the art uh, industry standard facilities. Uh, so you're going to be in a, in a good learning environment. Obviously, our courses are practical skills based. Uh, they are national training packages. And of course, like most institutions in Australia, they are recognized vocational qualifications. So when it goes back to that question about employment, your qualifications are going to be recognized. Overall, what I would say is TAFE Western Australia does present great value for money. So you might be paying a little bit more in fees, but you've got to ask, what are you getting in exchange for that in terms of the, uh, the extra care outside the classroom, the standard of the facilities, the industry connections, uh, and the reputation that comes uh, with a TAFE Western Australia certificate? So I mentioned we have over 100 courses. That's all of them there, but we're not going to go into all of those in great detail today. What I want to talk about is commercial cookery, but also hospitality. It's, it's in what we call the hospitality, cookery and tourism industry. And this, as Prasamsa has said, is a rapidly growing area, not just in Australia, but specifically in Western Australia. And in fact, basically because of our border closures at the moment in Western Australia, which are not going to last uh, very long. I'm optimistic that probably in a month or two, we're going to properly open up to the rest of Australia and hopefully the rest of the world. And when that happens, hospitality is going to take off. At the moment in Western Australia, there is an an extreme shortage of hospitality staff and commercial cookery staff. Now, Prasamsa mentioned year 12 as the entry requirement to get into certificate three in commercial cookery. And yes, for certain nationalities, we do need to see a minimum of year 12. But basically for, depending on your background, we can actually look at a minimum of year 10 as, as an entry requirement into uh, certificate three in commercial cookery. But very rarely do we see a student coming from that level. Because actually, when you come from that level, it presents a different problem, which is your age. And we have an age limitation. You have to be turning 18 in the, in the year that you start with TAFE Western Australia. So Certificate 3 Commercial Cookery, you're looking at a one-year course with us. Now, you can exit after that Certificate 3, but most students continue on to do the Certificate 4 in Commercial Cookery, which is basically a, a, an additional set of units for another six months to enhance your skills. And then, again, you can exit 
after that certificate for in commercial cookery and go into the workforce if, if that's all you want to do. But again, a lot of students choose to add on the Diploma of Hospitality Management and, of course, the Advanced Diploma of Hospitality Management. Now, from those two courses, we have a lot of university pathways, which is why they are little uh, hats next to them there. So things like uh, Bachelor of International Hotel and Resort Management, uh, which is with Edith Cowan University. So you do have to go into that hospitality management diploma if you want a pathway into university, but it also gives you an advantage from an employment perspective if you're going to leave TAFE and go directly into employment. Because if you've come, come through commercial cookery and you've gone into hospitality, that basically gives you the front of house and back of house uh, industry exposure and experience that you need. IELTS of 5.5, no band uh, less than five. Uh, again, we do from some nationalities uh, would like to see a slightly higher IELTS. But to be honest with you, anecdotally, I would say coming out of COVID, we're probably going to be a little bit more flexible with our entry requirements. So uh, what I would say is just put the question to Aussies, our fantastic agent partners, see if they'll put an application in for you and, and, and let's see where we go with that. Now, commercial cookery, yes, fantastic. Prasams has mentioned the starting salaries can be uh, maybe not as high as they might be as you progress through your career. I want to very quickly mention patisserie, because if you want to be in the kitchen, there is another alternative to commercial cookery, and that is patisserie. Again, a rapidly growing industry. And the salary in patisserie is actually quite strong. Now, it works in a similar way. Uh, it depends on the campus, but, but it's basically certificate three, certificate four, or directly into a certificate four for one and a half years. And again, these can be pathways into hospitality management. You can also go directly into hospital manage, hospitality management uh, if you like. So there is patisserie, great option. Let's look at some of the units for commercial cookery. I'm not going to go into them in great detail, but as you can see, uh, basic methods of cookery, but appetizers, salads, stocks, sauces, soups, vegetable fruit, eggs, farinaceous dishes, poultry, seafood, meat. So going down the list, you can see there's a lot of fantastic culinary units, but also the stuff like hygiene and management and working with others that are very important to having a, a well-rounded uh, certificate in commercial cookery. The key here is that kind of uh, what we call fusion cooking. Cooking, Basically, Australia, the cuisine here is a fusion of a lot of different areas. I mean, you only need to go to a, a restaurant like Vans here in Cottesloe in Perth to see what they do with Brussels sprouts, for example, which is a very European uh, cabbage-like food, but they mix it with uh, fish sauce and give it a, a tamarind fish sauce combination to turn it into a sort of Asian European fusion. That's what Australia is very uh, famous for. Is anybody hungry? Because I am going through this. Into patisserie, you can see cakes, uh, gateau, torten, pastries. Uh, there's some baking, there's some chocolate work, there's sugar work. So again, if you don't want to do commercial cookery and you don't want to be using big knives too much and, and making you know, fusion style standard kitchen uh, food, patisserie is an option for you. Still in the kitchen, still using your hands and your creativity. So it's a really interesting uh, opportunity there in patisserie. Now, let's talk about fees. So commercial cookery, hospitality, patisserie, the fees are all the same per semester, which is 8,000, just over $8,000 per semester. So you're looking at, that's for tuition fees, by the way, you're looking at about $16,000 for tuition fees per year. So, for example, a certificate three is going to be $16,000. It's a one year course. Certificate four, another $8,000 on top of that. What you do need to be mindful about is that coming to a place like TAFE, where the facilities are very big, there are lots of raw materials being used, lots of kitchen equipment. There are resource and materials fees that are, you know, in the range of zero up to $3,000 per course. So, for example, commercial cookery tuition fee around about $16,000 but actually goes up to about $19,000 when you factor in the, the resource and materials fees. But they are very important. They cover a lot of the, uh, the food that you are cooking, a lot of the equipment that you're using, much of what you, which you get to keep. And you also get to eat the food, by the way. So just keep that in mind. You know, as I said, value for money. Presumpsa mentioned scholarships. Uh, we prefer to use the word bursaries. Now, we don't currently have any on offer. But we have had some on offer for semester semester two 2021 and semester one 2022 uh, to the tune of around about a thousand up to two thousand dollars off your course. So not available at the moment. But as I said, keep in touch with Aussies, our agent partner, because as we approach semester two, semester one has already started. As we approach semester two, 
we will be communicating to our agent partners like Aussies uh, what bursaries are available for you, particularly for hospitality. Very quickly, I'm not going to dwell on this for too long because I want to give uh, Craig from Apero a chance to talk. How are we doing for time? Oh, it's only 11.37. I'll speak for another 45 minutes, no problem. So uh, maybe I will dwell on this just very quickly. The fees, as I said, equipment, raw materials, you know, industry connections, but you've got to understand that it's not just the fantastic classrooms that your fees are covering, it's the support outside the classroom. So you're going to be learning in, in very uh, small classes, comparatively speaking. Every student gets their own workstation. I'm going to show you some photos in a moment. Every student gets their own workstation. It's hands-on uh, individual learning supervised by a lecturer. Yes, you work in teams on some projects, but it's basically individual learning. We want every student to be competent. Uh, we want students to pick up those practical skills, so we focus on the students. We are constantly upgrading our facilities so that they meet industry. So when you leave TAFE and you go into the workforce, the employer knows, hey, the students from TAFE, they're ready to go. We don't need to train them anymore. But we also help you with stress, health, mental well-being. There's lots of support on campus around uh, that sort of stuff at the moment, particularly with COVID. And by the way, wherever you are, I hope you're safe and well, and the same for your family and friends. Um, but that's very important at the moment for a lot of our students. But so is things like, uh, you know, work and study balance, working on your study skills, improving your English, preparing you for those, those dreaded job interviews, which hopefully you will do well at when you come out of TAFE, helping you with career guidance, lots of academic support and dedicated international coordinators on campus. So value for money, your fees are not just money into uh, the TAFE Western Australia pockets, they are going into that certificate that you get at the end of the day being a very powerful employment product. Please keep that in mind. A quick look at our campuses. If you were to do uh, commercial cookery on our Joondalup campus, it's in what you, what you would call an education precinct right next door to Edith Cowan University down here and very close to Joondalup train station, which is north of Perth. And in fact, one of Australia's largest shopping malls is right here as well. So Education Precinct, very big campus. We have a training restaurant called the Pavilion Restaurant, uh, which I'll show you a photograph of shortly. Uh, and the same for our South Metropolitan TAFE Bentley campus, uh, the Bentley Pines, you can see it here, training restaurant, right next door to Curtin University. So again, an education uh, and training precinct. So very exciting dynamic areas to be as students. And if you go to Bunbury, which is about two hours south of Perth, it's a regional uh, town. Perth is also a regional, has a regional designation, but Bunbury is a regional town. Uh, again, education precinct right next door to Edith Cowan University. You can see the huge uh, South Regional TAFE, uh, Western Australia campus, and the Epicure training restaurant. Again, these are all publicly open training restaurants. So don't worry about internships, because when you come to TAFE, you're in a commercial kitchen, it's fully functioning, you are serving members of the public in a fully functioning open restaurant. So it's very exciting. Uh, there are lots of fantastic things to do on campus. And you can even go to Geraldton, by the way. Uh, Geraldton doesn't have university campuses, but this is the TAFE campus in Geraldton. And uh, wow, look how close it is to the beach. Where else would you rather be? So let's have a look at some uh, pictures very quickly. Uh, this is Michelle. She is a student from Zimbabwe, which is where I'm from, uh, which is in Africa. Uh, yes, there are white people in Africa, like me and Michelle. I know you're all asking the question, this guy's from Africa, I get that all the time. So Michelle here, she is doing commercial cookery on our Bunbury campus. You can see the kitchen is fantastic, lots of space. Uh, there's a lecturer in the background doing something, I'm not quite sure what. This is Daniel from Indonesia, he's also on our Bunbury campus. Uh, this gentleman's name I can't remember, but he is one of our participatory students on our Bentley campus. Uh, I hope you're all feeling hungry. Again, this is patisserie. You can see this is a lecturer here working with one of our students. I can't remember this gentleman's name, but I think he's from Mauritius, if I'm not mistaken. And you can see the classroom has also got some local students in it as well. Every student has their own workstation. The lecturer comes around, makes sure that you're doing things correctly in that particular unit or, or subject of the day. Uh, this is uh, another one of our students working in the commercial cookery section on our Bentley campus. You can see the size of it. The facilities are fantastic. Uh, lots of space. There's another student in the background. They're obviously working through some assessments. As part of commercial cookery, sorry, as part of hospitality, if you advance into that stage, 
We also have barista training. This is the brand new barista facility at the Bentley campus. I was told there are over 30 different types of coffee that students need to learn, which is unbelievable. And each of them are doing that on their own workstation. You can see the lecturer here going around the room, working with the students on an individual basis. Quick story for you. This gentleman is Chris Malone. He's one of our local students from TAFE Western Australia. This is a picture of him when he was doing his commercial cookery course in Joondalup. And look how young he looks. When he graduated from Certificate for Commercial Cookery, he started working in restaurants in Western Australia. And this is Chris uh, more recently. He proceeded to 11 Madison Park, which at the time was the world's number one restaurant, uh, to work with Michelin starred chefs. Uh, you can see he's grown and matured. He's generally considered one of the world's best young chefs at the moment. And in fact, he is now working at uh, the restaurant that's under the sea in Dubai. I can't remember what it's called, but it's the restaurant that's in an aquarium. So very exciting. He's one of our students. Uh, this is the Pavilion Training Restaurant uh, in Joondalup. As you can see, open to the public. This is the Bentley Pines Commercial Cookery Kitchen. These are students. Those are the workstations. This is the hospitality section uh, in the same facility just in front of the kitchen. You can see members of the public in the background. This is our Bunbury kitchen. Uh, and that's enough of the pictures. Now, do we have enough time for a quick video for some stuff? Hi, Michael. Yes, you can definitely show us the video. Yeah. OK, so let me see what I can do is I think I'm going to stop sharing that. Uh, let me. Try and share one video. The first video I want to share with you very quickly is something called Great Chefs and Great Wines. So this is with South Metropolitan Tate Bentley Campus, where we get uh, some of the leading chefs in Perth to come onto the campus and work with students on uh, a menu night where members of the public are invited to come and eat the students' food supervised by some of the leading chefs in uh, in Perth. So. Hopefully this is going to work. I'm not sure if it'll work when I make the speak bigger. The Great Chefs and Great Wineries dinner series is now celebrating its 10th year. And for that, we are hosting probably West Australia's premier restaurant in the Wildflower Restaurant at the Como, the Treasury. And combined with that, we've selected one of the most award-winning wineries in Western Australia, coming from Mount Barker in Gilbert's Wines. These dinner series allows the students to work alongside some of the best chefs and to obviously gain a lot more knowledge about the wines and about the products, especially the regional products that we have here in Western Australia. Participating in Great Chefs Great Wines, it has been, for one thing, so exciting. I mean, there's a serious buzz going around the entire place right now. Uh, everyone's bustling and you can just feel the energy in the air. One of the biggest things is the honour of having Matthew Sartori here. It is um, very exciting. Um, the chefs are excited. The food smells heavenly just in the back in the preparation process. One of the greatest things as well is just the, the simulation of that environment for everyone in hospitality and in the kitchen of um, these exciting kind of events that exist. I really like working with students because I feel like it really re-educates yourself. You know, cooking is something that's you know, there's no end to what you can learn. And I think when you're teaching others, you really, it really, really re-establishes, you know, your knowledge of what you are, are teaching. The students work alongside the chef preparing his menu. So the menu has been specifically designed to allow the students to work with, given their skills and their capabilities, and also extends them a little bit for skills and opportunities that they have not previously learned. So Matthew Sartori is one of, uh, actually one of Australia's leading chefs at Wildflower Restaurant, which is one of the leading restaurants in Australia. Do we have time for one more? I don't want to eat too much into Craig's time. Sorry, Craig. <laughs> That's okay. We can let the session run long. So Michael, you can show us the second video as well, and Craig can take his time with presenting to not a problem at all. Okay. One more video, and that's me done. Uh, and then hopefully we'll have some questions after Craig has spoken. Uh, the last video I'm going to show you, again, this is with South Metropolitan TAFE uh, on our Bentley campus. This video is about the hospitality and cookery careers day that we run every semester, so twice a year, where we, uh, and this is part of what your fees cover in terms of good value, we bring some of the big hotel chains and restaurants uh, and hospitality providers, um, corporate providers, Optus Stadium, for example, we bring them onto campus for a career fair and we get the students to speak to them, basically like an expo. 
Uh, it's very exciting. So let me show you that video very quickly. The Career Recruitment Day, we do this twice a year, usually in March and September. And it's really an opportunity for students to actually gain employment with the various organisations that you see here today. For employers, I think it's, it's a great opportunity because they are actually going to be recruiting people who are truly interested in the industry and not taking people off the street. And coming here is just you know, the, the greatest opportunity for them. And we've had feedback from industry saying that you know, it's such a wonderful day and to get the right good people to be employed, really. <laughs> there you go, presenting an award of some sort. <laughs> fabulous, fabulous. Excellent. So you've been studying for a while? I think events like the Hospitality Recruitment Day are, are excellent for us to be able to get um, awareness out there of our company and what we do and, and really um, just getting to talk to the students on the ground level and, and really get an idea of, of what they're studying and what they'd like to achieve and how we can help them get there. Students who have studied um, hospitality or cookery or anything related to the hotel industry, I think they come in with a really strong motivation to succeed and learn and develop their careers, which um, you know I think for us it's, it's completely worth the investment and the time to, to train them and, and get them to where they'd like to go in their careers. You know, they give a lot back to us in terms of enthusiasm. You know, the knowledge that they've got is up to date because they've just recently completed their qualification. So, um, you know, what they've learned is all current information and knowledge. Um, and, you know, the skills they go through, you know, really great training through their courses. And, and I think that that helps them coming into it as well. They've already got that background and, and that skill set behind them. And, and from there, you know, we've got a lot to build upon from that. Hospitality Recruitment Day has actually gave me confidence and getting out in the new industry of hotels and the opportunities opening up and getting me a new job. Um, go to school for The Hospitality Recruitment Day has been great so far. We interacted with some of the biggest companies such as Crown and Accor. In fact, we had some ex-students who are working as a manager, which is a very big thing, and they studied from our TAFE campus. So it's a big motivation for all the students. OK. Thanks very much, guys. That's, uh, that's enough from me. I hope that was interesting for you and hopefully you'll have lots of questions either today or for Aussies going forward. Thank you for that showcase, Michael. It was definitely very informative and uh, I'm sure the students are excited to jump on board and sign up for the cooking courses in Western Australia, not just at the program, but for it looks like an exciting place. I definitely feel like I want to visit after looking at all the food and restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hope, hope to see you. I <laughs> Definitely, as the board is open. Um, Craig, over to you now. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Riddhi. Hi, everyone um, from Apero Institute. And uh, today I would be talking on automotive. I'll just share my screen in a moment. So you guys can see the so yep. I'm from a parent. So hello everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Craig and I'm from a Institute. Today I'm here to speak on the campus, the locations, what courses we run, but I won't go through all the courses because we are mainly focusing today is on automotive. So so a Pero Institute where so basically, Apero Institute about us. So what's Apero? It's new beginning and endless possibilities. And our name implies to create infinite possib possibilities. And our timeline. So 2018 was the first campus that we had in Perth. 
Then 2020, we got a second campus in Melbourne and 2021, the third campus in Sydney. I won't run through mission and vision because. So, our, so basically our campuses have spacious classrooms, excellent study environment, strategic locations. So basically all our campuses are close to public transport in case a student doesn't have a car or you know he can easily get to a public transport and get to the college. We have all the modern facilities and experienced trainers. So this, so this is the campus glimpse that I will be taking. These are the students working on uh, attending their lectures. This is the workshop where they would be doing their practicals. All the automotive students, like you all know, automotive is not only um, bookish knowledge. You got to be practical also. So yeah, this is the workshop that we have. So this is the room where the students can sit down and do all their, their notes, their note fillings and all the assessments while they're working on the on the engines or any part of the car. So automotive. In automotive, we have three things. That's Cert 3 in light vehicle mechanical technology, Cert 4 in automotive mechanical technology and diploma of automotive technology. So I'll run through each one of them. So in Cert 3 light vehicle mechanical technology, it basically has service body control of and vehicle communication systems. It's the it's basically um, it's for cars and uh, it's it, it is related to issue with the engine or whether with the steering suspension or anything related to the to a small part then what are the career outcomes we have vehicles like prashams are already said earlier this would be the vehicle this would be the career outcomes that is vehicle service technicians and vehicle technicians like the salaries would be already you know a weekly pay would be around 1400 to $1,600 depending on on how long term are you going to work with them then we have the next that's duration so cert 3 is 68 weeks inclusive of 10 weeks of holiday and it's 20 hours per week plus self-study directed uh oh just give me a moment. So it is it is run in all three locations. That's in Melbourne, Sydney and Perth. Same thing with Cert 4 in automotive. It's they you they learn to analyze and repair systems, test engines during using a dynometer. So basically this is one step higher than what Cert 3 is. Here they would learn to uh, you would learn to work on the engines using dynamometers, seeing what is the fault, whether there's something um, that's needed to get changed or whether there's any major repair to be done in a particular vehicle. And that would help them to learn how to, you know, diagnose the system faults and work on it. So the career outcomes in these are automotive lead or master technician or automotive technical advisor. As you can see, their weekly pays are are $1,900 to $1,500 to $1,900. And they are all available in all three campuses again. So there's a prerequisite for, for a Cert 4. That is, you need to have automotive uh, mechanical Cert 3 certificate, or you, you need to have equivalent competency. The duration for this particular course is 26 weeks inclusive of three weeks of holiday, 20 hours per week plus self-directed study. It's running in all three campuses. That's in Perth, Melbourne and Sydney. Coming to diploma. In, in diploma of uh, automotive technology, you would be basically learning about business management, then report 
and document developments. Then you'd be assisting in customer service and also in mechanical and electrical maintenance repairs and services. So this course outcomes would be automotive diagnostic technicians, automotive technicians and service technicians. So you can select whatever you whatever trades you get. The, there is a prerequisite for this for, for a diploma. That is, you need to be automotive mechanical set for or equivalent competency. It's a 26 weeks course inclusive of two weeks of holiday. Again, 20 hours per week plus self directed study and locations. As you can see, it's running in all three campuses. That's like I said earlier, Perth and Perth, Melbourne and Sydney. So the main employment industry at this point of time, if you see, is other services like, you know, uh, people who like it was already said, cooks, chefs, then or automotives, motor mechanics, all these kind of have higher percentage of uh, higher rate of shares in it, and they are the ones employing more in this industry. So educational level, educational levels, if you see certificate three and four has has increased from the last couple of years. What do you learn from? Oh, one second. What what do you learn from mechanical from? Can you guys hear me? Yes, Craig. Oh. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, yes, of course, yes. Yes. OK, so the knowledge what you'd be getting in this is mechanical, uh, that you'd be working on machines, tools, including design, users, repairs, and maintenance. And you'd be learning 57% of computers and electronics engineering technology that is using uh, technology to design or produce anything, any new product or repairing the old product. The activities, what you'd be doing over here is handling and moving objects. That is, you'd be using your hands and arms to install or move any, any object or anything. Working with mechanical equipment, you know, you have to, you'd be servicing it, adjusting it, testing it, moving parts, changing parts, etc. You'd be doing all these. Next, the the highest. So right now, if you go to see occupations are high in New South Wales for motor mechanics, then in Victoria, Queensland, in Western Australia, then in South Australia, and then in rest of the parts of Australia. The fees I then take for these for these courses are fairly discounted, and we have a, we have the dates intakes given over here, intake dates given. So we have every monthly we are taking uh, an intake for students. One second. I'm sorry, my screen. Yeah, so this is the monthly intakes. If you see for all the fee structure with the fee structures and everything. These are the course. This is the package courses running in all our campuses. We have so like you guys asked about scholarships. We don't have scholarships at the moment, but we're offering a thousand dollar off on all our campuses and on and back in package B, our fees and duration is given, which is we are offering uh, $2,500 off for everything. And that's all I have today. Thank you so much for shedding light 
on um, you know such uh, descriptive courses available at Opero. Um, Craig, uh, I would actually like to invite Bob now. He's a student who has joined us this afternoon. Um, Bob, can you hear us? Yep, I can hear. Hi, Bob. Um, good afternoon. Can you go ahead and introduce yourself and let us know how uh, you know what you've studied and what your journey has been like in Australia? Um, my name is Bob. I'm from Hong Kong, and I came to uh, Perth in six years uh, six years ago. And um, I came to Western Australia was study a step four in pastry. Then after that was just I go go straight to study high level like advanced diploma and a diploma in the hospitality and uh, advanced diploma in the business. Oh, sorry, I'm so sorry about that. Um, I was just asking um, Bob about why he actually chose the course and the provider that he went ahead with. Like in the Piro? Yes, that's right. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, um, I mean, when I study a Piro, because I, on that moment, uh, I know the Piro is for my friend, and uh, the course I want to continue study. And it's not many options in Perth. And just uh, a period they did offer this course. And um, when I, um, when I choose uh, uh, the apparel, the tradition um, free is a full book for me. And I know the apparel is I uh, most of my friends, just like around my friends, they know the period. And like where I was studied, uh, most of the lecture is really nice and they're very friendly to teaching me. That's wonderful to hear. You've had such a good experience. Um, can you let us know about the student support and you know your experience with the trainers, the infrastructure on campus, and uh, your overall journey while you were studying? Yeah. So um, the well was study a period the course and like every like every course or every unit when we finished. Then my lecture will just take us out to like somewhere to the South Perth, East Perth to just like get some function to just start like, handing out. And uh, and uh, when when we was was study and the lecture is pretty funny and he always make fun and make the class always laugh. And yeah, he did using so many uh his side like, different teaching way to teaching us is quite different between and other lecture is not very boring at all and normally he will just like try to make some fun or make some attention not make the classroom just like like a public classroom so um i can see most students they was pretty um friendly with the lecture so like between the student and the lecture we are like the friends more than the like a lecture and the student yep so like on on the end like this year was like pretty happy and um my lecture is called Eric like yeah he's pretty he's pretty happy to like to be his student and just in the last year yep that's so incredible to hear you've had a fun time not just learning but even with in class interactions. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about your experience of having enrolled through Aussie's group and the support that you got from our consultants? How was that like? Yeah, um, the Aussie's group, like, um, they was, uh, yeah, they, they were, they was introduced the uh, apparel to me. So, um, I mean, before when I heard the apparel is, I know they got the PT class and is, uh, my agent. And in the autist group, so they introduced to me, and uh, that's the that's the first one I go to apparel. So after that, uh, I was I, I I I was go for there to study in the for the for the course. Yeah. So the autist group they did like yeah help helping me a lot for like to the for the study or for after that for the graduate visa or whatever. Yeah. We're so pleased to hear that we were able to help you out with your admissions as well as your post-study uh, work visa. Um, but I'm sure, you know, this whole journey and process has not been all about, you know, uh, all been easy. So can you share a little bit with uh, us about your 
um, you know, difficulties, some challenges you've faced and what sort of advice you have for the fellow students who come to Australia or who study automotive courses in the future? Yeah, I will. Yeah. All righty. Um, so that pretty much brings us to the end of the session. We just have one question for Michael. Uh, Naman is asking us about the leading industries in Western Australia at the moment. Ah, very good question. So obviously the leading industry in Western Australia is resources. Um, the mining sector in Western Australia is critically important to uh, not just Western Australia, but basically to the whole country. Uh, I think it's um, very easily forgotten by the rest of Australia that if it wasn't for Western Australia's resources sector, um, the, the rest of the country would probably be struggling economically. So we have a very important industry here in Western Australia, which is resources. Now, the thing about resources is that not only are there a lot of opportunities in that area, but the size of that industry means that there are a lot of uh, peripheral industries uh, associated, associated with it. So construction, engineering, um, lots of logistics, lots of transport, uh, but also things like hospitality and commercial cookery. You know, these mine sites, for example, uh, usually up north, but some of them are down south in Western Australia, but most of them are up north. They are huge uh, sites with, with huge populations of workers. They all need to be fed. They all need to be housed. So uh, those little towns where the mines are, you know, the industries uh, in, in periphery to resources are quite broad and quite strong. Lots of commercial cookery, lots of hospitality. So beneath, beneath resources, I would say, uh, and beneath all the peripheral industries, I would say that hospitality and tourism uh, is probably also up there as, as, as critically important to Western Australia. Clearly, it's taken a bit of a hit uh, for two years, uh, seeing as we've been a little bit closed off. It's, it's just inevitable that it's going to change uh, and it's going to change soon. We can't be closed forever. Our state premier knows that. And I think that in, uh, in a few months time, we'll start opening up again. And hospitality is going to be so, so important. We are already short staffed down here. And aside from that, the other thing really is, is agriculture, uh, fresh fruit, veg, produce, uh, um, meat, those sorts of things, which again feeds into, which, uh, you know, feeds into the hospitality and commercial cookery uh, field. You know, we have such a wonderful agriculture industry here. Uh, most, most restaurants and chefs are basically using local produce. So I hope that answers the question. Yep, that definitely answers the question. Thank you for elaborating on that so well, Michael. Uh, we have another question from Rishab, who is asking about the possibilities of, you know, getting a visa from offshore for trade courses. Um, what sort of outcomes do you see for students when you are getting enrollment? Good question. Um, getting a visa for skills-based courses. Look, uh, you know, the Department of Home Affairs obviously is in charge of issuing student visas. And it has historically been difficult for some students to get student visas to come and do vocational studies. The Department of Home Affairs, when we ask them uh, why it's sometimes so challenging for students, they give us the same answer, which is that all genuine students get a student visa. Of course, you can never really pin them down and understand uh, a lot of what happens with, with visa grants and visa refusals. All I would say is, that is partly true, all genuine students get a student visa. So all I would say is, 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 is two things. Number one, use uh, a good agency like Aussies, for example, to help you navigate through that process. They will give you an honest idea of whether or not you're going to meet the profile. So if, for example, you know, you're five years out of school and you've done a, a Bachelor of Chemical Engineering, for example, and you want to come and do patisserie, that starts presenting a few challenges. You've got to really show why that career change is important to you. But if you're a school leaver uh, who's looking to go into something skills based, that's slightly different. So, so every student's different. And Aussies and, and us as an institution, we will try and work through what opportunities we can present, present you. So that's the first thing I would say. The second thing I would say is that coming out of COVID, coming out of this pandemic, 
we really don't know what's going to happen with student visas, but the uh, the theory is that home affairs is going to be a little bit more open and a little bit more flexible with student visas. Number one, because they need students. We need students. Australia needs students. But number two, because they understand that not just Australia, but other countries around the world are desperate for recognized skills. So I think Craig will agree uh, from Apero that 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 this is the time now for skills, um, I think, in the next in the next year, two or three. So, you know, all I would say is if you're worrying about the visa, make sure you've got a good agent partner like Aussies, but just be patient, pick the right course and, and uh, let's see what happens as, as international students start returning. I can see lots of questions coming through. Yeah, but a lot of people are asking questions. Deva wants to know if she can do the cookery course along with the business management course that she's currently enrolled in. Ah, so you're currently studying business management and you want to do commercial cookery at the same time. Are you currently studying commercial cookery, uh, sorry, business in, can we do commercial cookery along with business management course? I'm just reading your question. If your question is, can you do commercial cookery and business at the same time as a new student? You basically can't. Um, you can obviously go from commercial cookery into hospitality management, which is kind of the business side of things with a hospitality focus. If your question is that you are currently studying business and you want to add commercial cookery to it, that's called concurrent studies. Now, believe it or not, it is actually possible to do concurrent studies, but it's quite tricky to do it. I've only had two students try and do it in the last five years, I think, and, and I think both of them have not managed to do it. One of them is a University of Western Australia student who wanted to do a, a TAFE course. Concurrent studies are possible. But it has to be with the permission of your principal institution, which might be a university, for example. And you have to be able to juggle the time that you need to devote to both courses. It's very difficult to do concurrent uh, studies. Lots of questions. Uh, let's have a look. I'm taking over here, by the way, uh, Prasamsa. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Question to Michael. I've heard that it's almost I think we've answered that one. It's not impossible to get a visa for, for trade or skills based courses. Just to go back to that point. It's not impossible, but yes, it's not not as easy. So just just proceed carefully. You've got to really explain why it is you're choosing the particular skills course that you want to do. It's got to it's got to it's got to be good. You've said here uh, you're from the hospitality background, did hospital uh, bachelor's in hotel management, and went to study. Uh, you want to study commercial cookery, so do you? I think you'll get a visa for that um, after doing bachelor's. Um, certainly, you'd have a better chance than other students with different profiles. Um, uh, of course, I can't guarantee it. It's up to home affairs, but you've got to present a strong, strong case, show some work experience, explain why this is going to benefit your career. And Aussies will help you do that, I hope. <laughs> we'll definitely take care of that case, Michael. Um, if that's it for the questions, um, we would like to request all of you who participated in the session today to leave a review for us. Um, if you have enjoyed today's session, do let us know. And if there's something we haven't covered during the summit and you'd like to see next time, uh, do let us know as well. I have left a link for the feedback in the comment section below, as well as the you know list of our links for the upcoming sessions throughout the day. So we actually have a follow up to the cookery and automotive courses. This was the one about courses in the follow up session at 3 p.m. You'll actually get to know more about the skill assessment and future state pathways in Australia. So don't miss out on that and join using the links in the comment section below. And we'll see you on day four and day five of the summit. Thank you so much for everyone. And thank you to our panelists who have shed so much light and given us so much information today. Thanks, Rudy. Thank Thanks, uh, Prasamsa. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you, so thank you. Thank you Michael. Nice meeting you, Michael.